The final general counting rule that we'll examine is called inclusion-exclusion, and it is a, a straightforward generalization of the sum rule, at least in the simple case of two sets that we'll look at first. So we're going to look at the 6042 example of applying inclusion-exclusion, but let's begin by stating what it is. So the sum rule says that if you have two sets A and B that are disjoint, no overlap between A and B, then the size of A union B is equal to the size of A plus the size of B. Well, that's obvious. We took that as a kind of basic axiom. Um, but what if they're not disjoint? Suppose that A and B overlap and there's some stuff in here. That's the intersection of A and B uh, where there are points in common. What then is the size of A union B in terms of simpler things that we can count? And the answer is that the size of A union B is the size of A plus the size of B minus the size of A intersection B. Now, the intuitive reason for that, and it's not really very hard to make a, a precise argument, is that when you're adding up the elements in A, you're counting all the elements in the intersection once. And then when you add in the elements in B here, A plus B, you're counting all the elements in the intersection a second time. The ones that are in A minus B get counted once. The ones that are in B minus A get counted once. But the ones that are in A intersection B get counted twice. So to get the right count, I have to uh, subtract the size of A minus B so it's only counted once in uh, the total formula. And that's an intuitive explanation of why inclusion exclusion uh, formula holds for two sets. Let's apply it. And uh, I'm going to look at an example uh, where we're looking at digit permutations. And I'm going to look at permutations of the 10 digits, 0 through 9, inclusive. There's a standard one where they're listed in order, and there is just a random seeming uh, permutation of the uh, digits 0 through 9. Notice that the 1 and 3, uh, the 2 is sort of out of order. The rest are in order. Now, what I'm going to be interested in is those permutations um, where certain patterns appear. So first of all, let's note that the number of permutations we know how to count is 10 factorial. I'm interested in how many permutations have uh, a consecutive 6 and 0, a consecutive 0 and 4, or a consecutive 4 and 2. In other words, two of the consecutive numbers that appear in 6042. Well, uh, the first one does not. Uh, there's no 6, 0, 0, 4, or 4, 2 in this list. This one has a 4, 2, so it would count as one of those permutations that uh, has either a 6, 0, a 0, 4, or a 4, 2, because it's got the 42. Um, here's one where you've got a, uh, a 2 and a 4, but that's not a 4 and a 2. And in fact, there is no pattern here of 6, 0, 0, 4, 4, 2, so it's not one of the permutations that I'm interested in. Uh, on the other hand, here's one that's doubly good. This is a, a, a permutation that has both a 0, 4 in it and a 4, 2 in it, so it would be a, one of these permutations of the kind that I'm looking for that has at least one of the patterns, 6, 0, 0, 4, or 4, 2. Well, if I let p sub x be the permutations with the subsequence x, then what I'm really saying is that this one with a 42 in it is in p42, because it's got the 42 pattern. Uh, this one with a 0, 4, and a 4, 2 in it is in the p04 uh, uh, set of permutations with the pattern Z, uh, 0, 4, intersected with the set of patterns that have a 42 in it. So that's uh, what that one illustrates. So what we're really asking for, then, is the union of three things, the union of P60, P04, and P42. How many, how big is the set of sequences that have a 6, 0 union, the set of things that have a 6, a 0, 4 union, the set of things that have a 4, 2? And as we saw illustrated in the previous slide, these are not disjoint. Well, I've been cheating a little because in order to pick figure out this one, I'm going to need inclusion-exclusion for three sets instead of two, it's, and which is slightly more complicated because I have a union of three things that overlap. 
Uh, and let's look at that. So what does inclusion exclusion look like for three sets? If I want to know what's the size of A union B union C, here's a Venn diagram that shows a picture of A union B union C with all possible overlaps illustrated there. And the formula turns out to be um, you add up A, B, and C. You add up the size of A, the size of B, and the size of C. Yeah? Now that has the consequence that just that sum of A, B, and C is counting this um, uh, lens-shaped region that is the intersection of A and C. It's counting it twice in the A plus C term. It's counting A intersection B twice, and it's counting this lens shape, which is C intersection B twice. So in order to get the sum right, uh, uh, I'm going to have to subtract uh, one occurrence of A intersection B, one A intersection C, one B intersection C, so that those items are only counted once in this sum. And then, in fact, if you look at this region here, uh, the sort of rounded triangle region, which is the intersection of A with B and C, that one is actually getting counted three times. All three circles overlap it. So when I add in A and I add in B and I add in C, every one of those points there is being added three times. On the other hand, um, this uh, rounded triangle shape which is counted three times in the sum A plus B plus C, is being subtracted three times. Because when I look at A intersection B, um, uh, this region, and I subtract it, I'm taking one away from the count on each point there. And likewise, with A intersection C takes one away, and B intersection C takes one away, leaving the points in the rounded triangle in A intersection, B intersection, C not counted at all. So if I'm going to get the total count right so that every point is counted exactly once, I have to add back in the intersection of A and B and C. So that's an informal explanation of why the of how the inf inclusion exclusion formula works for three sets. We'll look at ways to rigorously prove inclusion exclusion for an arbitrary number of sets shortly, but not in this segment. Let's go on and apply the inclusion exclusion rule for three sets um, to the example of uh, digit permutations with the pattern 6, 0, uh, 0, 4, and 4, 2. And the way to remember this is that um, the odd, uh, the, the intersections of an even number of sets occur negatively. The intersection of an odd number of sets occur positively. And of course, a, a single set can be th thought of as just an intersection of one set with itself. And so it's also odd and occurs positively. All right. Um, well, now we can apply the formula and say that um, the set of permutations that have a 6, 0, a 0, 4, and a 4, 2 is equal to the sum of the number that have a 6, 0, the number that have a 0, 4, and the number that have a 4, 2, minus uh, the numbers that have two of the patterns, um, minus uh, those that have all three patterns. And let's count these individual intersections uh, and sets of permutations separately. It turns out that each one is easy to count, which is a typical situation, why, which is why inclusion exclusion is a val valuable principle, because this thing that is harder to count can be broken up into counting a bunch of other things, intersections, that are often easier to count, and they will be here. So let's begin by looking at P60. P60 is the set of permutations which consist of, which, uh, of, which have a 6, 0 in them. Well, to count them, we can think about it this way. Think of uh, the patterns with a 6, 0 in them as a permutation of nine items, the digits 1 through 5 and 7 through 9, and uh, the object 6, 0 that you can place anywhere, but it, it's got to be lumped together. So there are really nine possible permutations of these things. Um, uh, eight of them digits, and one of them is this pair of digits, 6, 0. Uh, and the number of those permutations is equal to the number of permutations with the pattern 6, 0. So the answer is there are nine factorial permutations with the pattern 6, 0. Same, of course, applies to P04 and, and P42. Um, the, uh, the number of permutations with a given two-digit pattern is nine factorial. Okay, what about P60 intersection 
P42. Well, you can think of this as the same way. You can think of this as saying, okay, I've got an object 6, 0, I've got an object 4, 2, and I've got the remaining digits 1, 3, 7, 8, 9 to permute, and the, uh, the, the sequences of of 10 digits that contain both a 6, 0 and a 4, 2 correspond exactly to permutations of the digits 1, 3, 5, 7, 8, 9 and the object 4, 2 and the object 6, 0. Now there's eight of these things and so the number of permutations of these eight things is 8 factorial which means the size of P60 intersection P42. The number of permutations of 10 digits that have both a 6, 0 and a 4, 2 pattern is 8 factorial. Now that's the case of an intersection where these two things don't overlap. Let's look at the case of P60 intersection P04. Well, if it's got both a 6, 0 and a 0, 4, it actually is the same as having a 6, 0, 4. So the intersection of P60 and P, P04 is the set of sequences that have the pattern 6, 0, 4, and I count those in the same way. I say, okay, um, I've got an object 6, 0, 4 plus the remaining digits 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 8, 9 for a total of eight objects and the number of permutations of the digits of the 10 digits that have the pattern 604 corresponds to the number of permutations of these eight things again eight factorial okay finally how many uh, permutations are there that have all three patterns 6004 and 42 that of course is exactly the same as the set of sequences with the single pattern 6042 the four digit pattern and again we count that by saying that it's the number of permutations of the digits other than 6042 six of them plus the 6042 object there are seven of these and so there are seven factorial permutations that have all three patterns so that means that I can go back to my inclusion exclusion formula for the patterns that have one of the for the sequences that have one of the three patterns 6004 and 42 and plug them in so I get 3 9 factorials for the first uh, uh, sum of three terms the intersections we all figured out each of them were of size 8 factorial so I'm going to subtract 3 times 8 factorial and this last term we figured out was 7 factorial well, I can think of 3 times 9 factorial as uh, 9 times 8 times 3 times 7 factorial, and this is 3 times 8 times 7 factorial, and I wind up with... ...72,720. That's how many permutations of the digits 0 through 9 there are that have one or another of these three patterns. It turns out that's about 27% of the 10 factorial permutations of 0 through 9. So that's the significance of this, uh, of, of applying this disjunction of constraints, this union of um, having either 6004 or 42.